here we have three equations that are a little different. This is the area of a triangle, and the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. You might have seen that before. Here's just a random equation, it has nothing to do with anything. It's got a lot of letters in it, X, B, A, C. We'll figure that one out. And then here, this is something you might have seen before. This is simply the temperature in Fahrenheit degrees equals 9 fifths the temperature in centigrade degrees plus 32. And this equation helps you go between Fahrenheit and centigrade degrees. So let's say that in this particular case, we want to solve this equation for H. Here, we want to solve this equation for B. And notice B appears twice. Not only that, it appears on both sides of the equal sign. So that is kind of a, a different case, and we'll learn how to do that. And here, let's say that we want to solve this equation for centigrade degrees instead of Fahrenheit degrees. So let's start with that one over here. Again, the rule is if the equation is such that the variable you're looking for is on the right side of the equation instead of the left side of the equation, simply flip the equation around. So we write this as 1 half BH equals A. Okay. The next thing you see is, wow, there's a fraction here. I want to get rid of the fraction. And just like before, when we have an equations where we have just a single variable x and there's fractions, you multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. So in this case, the common denominator is 2, so we multiply the left side by 2, and we multiply the right side by 2. So that rule doesn't change. It's exactly the same. By multiplying the left side by 2, the 2 cancels the 1 half. You're left with BH. And on the right side, you simply get 2 times A. We're still solving for H. So here I look at the left side. I have an H and a B. I want to get rid of the B. I divide the left side by B. I divide the right side by B. Notice that cancels out. And H equals 2A over B. OK? That's how you do that one. Now, what do you do with this one right here? Well, just like before, when you have parentheses, so here you had fractions, you want to get rid of fractions. Here you have parentheses, you want to get rid of parentheses. So go ahead and distribute the A and the B on the left and the right side of the equation into those quantities inside the parentheses. So you can write this as AX plus AB equals BX minus BC. So now you've gotten rid of the parentheses. The next thing you do is you look at the left and the right side, and you recognize now that the B appears three times, once on the left side and twice on the right side. So you want to move everything that has a B in it to the left side, everything that doesn't have a B in it to the right side. That's how you isolate the B. And just like before, whenever a single item crosses the equal sign, you must change the sign. Since the AB is already there, that doesn't change, so we'll write it here, AB. The BX is on the right side. We want to move it to the left side. The sign changes. This is minus BX. And over here, we have the minus BC on the right side. We want to move that to the left side. That becomes a plus BC. We have the AX on the left side. Does not have a B in it. That moves to the right side. Becomes a minus AX. OK, at least now at this point, we have all the terms that have a B in it on the left side and everything else to the right. We want to isolate the B, so we're going to factor out a B out, out of each of these terms. So this can be written as B times A minus X plus C. The right side doesn't change, minus AX. Notice what's happened now. I have now have my B isolated multiplied by what's left. If you're not sure you did this right, again, the way to, do, to check yourself is to multiply this back in. So B times A gives me AB. B times minus X gives me minus BX. B times a plus C gives me a plus BC. So that's how you quickly check that you've factored this correctly. Now you're going to divide both sides of the equation by the multiplier of B. So in, in other words, minus A, um, A minus X plus C. And here you do, of course, whatever you do to the left side, make sure you do the same to the right side. So divide this by A minus X plus C. Notice that a minus x plus c appears in the numerator, appears in the denominator, so they cancel out. Make sure that this is multiplied, not added. If, if this was b plus that, then of course you can do that. But since it's multiplied, you're allowed to do that. And over here, you just leave it as is. And so you can write that b equals minus ax over a minus x plus c. Okay. Now let's look at this one. 
we want, want to solve for C, that means this term has to make it to the left, this term has to make it to the right. Although it might be not a bad idea to simply flip the equation around, so we can write this as 9 over 5C plus 32 equals F. Again, if you flip the whole equation around, you do not have to change any signs. Since I'm solving for C, I want to get rid of this 32, so I'll move that to the, left, the right side. Since I only move the 32 by itself, that sign will change. So now I have 9 over 5C is equal to F minus 32. Now notice I still have a fraction here, and I want to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator in this side. In this case, the common denominator is just the number 5, so I multiply the left side by 5, I multiply the right side by 5, these 5's cancel out, I end up with 9C equals 5 times F minus 32. Again, it doesn't matter if I write the 5 behind the parentheses or in front, if I'm multiplying, it's called the cumulative property, I can write 5 times that or this times 5, makes no difference. The last step is I still have the 9 in front of the C, I don't want the 9 there, I'm going to divide the left side by 9, because when I do that, I realize that will cancel. And of course, I need to do the same to the right side. There we go. Get rid of the nines. C equals 5 over 9 times F minus 32. Again, do I need to write it like that? Not necessarily. I can write 5 divided by 9 like this, or I can write it like that. It means exactly the same thing.